among those 500 who participated in the conference, and I'm sure, I'm sure that there were some who had featured in every constitutional conference that uh, had been hosted by the various administrations that straddled you know, the political space over this uh, period of time. If I recall this very well, there had hardly been any administration, except this one, that hadn't called one form of constitutional summit or national conference or whatever, by whatever name. If these conferences had the solution to the problem, this things would have been locked. All of the problems of the country would have been resolved a long time ago. Now, our party, our political leaders, took a principled stand against the conference. They said it was a job for the boys. And I think that those who participated, they, they had a good run. Huge money, eight billion initial budget. It was increased to 12 billion. And, and they, so they had a good ride. But our leaders stayed away from it. Now, it would have been unfair to ask a political party which campaigned against the conference to now be asked to come and implement it. That's, that's not uh, charitable. I have said on a similar platform here that if critically the membership and the structure of that conference was organized, it is a conference that was lopsided ethnically, politically, religiously, geographically. They were just careless about every, our sensibilities of Nigerians. I recall from Delta State, Ichekiri, the second largest ethnic group in that, in that state, one, one representative was appointed at the initial uh, takeoff of the conference. The, pres the then president's ethnic group had 15 members coming from his own language group. So this is the kind of thing that you are talking about.